Ah, so, you finally arrived. Good. Oh? What's with that look on your face? Are you surprised to see me? Hmm. It has been a little while, hasn't it, my prince? Well, that is true. I apologize for not alerting you sooner about my absence. It was a rather urgent matter. I hope you didn't miss me too much. I'm sure dinners were quite lonely. <laughs> there you go again. Well, I suppose you needed a bit of a break from me then, didn't you? No, it's only been a week or so. Hmm? Ah. <laughs> I had some business to attend to in Claris. Are you interested in what's been happening in that kingdom of yours? Hmm. Well, I would say it wasn't anything serious to ease you, but I'm not here to sugarcoat things. Nor am I here to hide things from you in regards to your country. I would have told you what was happening, but I had no time and I had to leave. So, tell me. What do you think was so urgent? Hmm. As you suspect, it was about the Elder Council of Claris. As you clearly know, they are the head leaders of your clans. Hmm. And I don't think you would find it surprising that they are vying for power in your family's absence. With Miro's betrayal of the country, they finally stomped down on that branch of the Felidae clan. Hmm. Indeed. Since they have fallen in the ranks, it has made your reinstatement a little more difficult. <sighs> I knew they wouldn't sit still, but they did start moving quicker than I thought. <laughs> it is the Aves clan. Indeed, Lord Falco. Yes. Yeah. He is somewhat of a distant uncle of yours by marriage. The old geezer is very adamant about taking you down. Mm. I've looked through a number of records, and it seems that he's upset that his own daughter, Horea Radamnos, was passed up by your father. His claim to leadership in the council was practically ruined, and it only got worse when your mother, a random commoner from the Saravide clan, at the crown prince, of all people. <laughs> He's been quite the thorn in my side. <laughs> all right. <sighs> well, I left because we found out due to certain trade restrictions from clans, Ares of Claris are starving. They are lacking basic medical supplies and food. Suspiciously, rations that have been sent out have gone missing. I'm not sure. While I was on my tour there, I picked up on some rumors. Apparently, many of the people are blaming Penkos. Mm. Lord Falco must have spread some ridiculous rumor. <laughs> Perhaps his plans are to make the people angry again. To support their proposed oligarchy, or false ruler that they wish to install. I spent the week directly supervising deliveries until I could see that it was stable again. Hmm. I've increased the amount of troops to prevent any rogue clans from continuing their plans. <sighs> I didn't think they would sit still, no. But to think they'd really kill their own people again just to rule. However, it will be difficult to do any of that, as long as you are under our custody. And although I know you hate it, do be grateful. You would have been long dead if you were not here. My dear prince, I know you look at me with much scorn. But I did what I had to do. The Outer Council 
They sold you out completely. They wanted to have you killed, hung from the gates. And I'm not exactly sure what it was, but I could not let you die. I held out hope, I suppose. A bit silly of me, really. But you are the true descendant of the god Atlas. That little golden gem of yours is proof. Along with those beautiful violet eyes, you are the image of Clara's royalty. Any attempt to thrust a random person to power without proof of any divinity will be difficult. <laughs> the people of Claris hold faith close to their hearts. Trust me. Soon enough, though, I will put a stop to their schemes once and for all. <laughs> but be wary of your surroundings. If you're out of the picture, it will be much easier to take power. <laughs> yes. You are the only one alive as far as we know. Well, actually, that is another bit of news. During my time there, I received, well, we, we found Prince Theron. He was in a hidden hallway he perished by his own hand. He was found on the ground with who we believe is Lady Brina of House Ladle. She also disappeared during the war, and, well, I know you did not have a good relationship with him, but I, um, I, I do apologize. see. No. It has nearly been a year, and we still cannot find your stepmother and sister. No. We have not called off the search quite yet, so I do pray that your sister is alive, and I hope we will find them by year's end. I know that this is a lot to take in, and I am... Sorry. I really am. <laughs> Nevertheless, I came here not to only tell you that, but to also tutor you today. No, Prince Ides will not be here. He was whisked away by Vesper for some business. I would have hired a substitute for you, but I decided, since we are a mere month away from the ball, it would be better for me to do it. Oh, are you disappointed? Well, I'm sure it is a well-deserved break for my uncle. <laughs> well, perhaps not. Vesper does not make it easy for him. But let's see. In the notes he passed on to me, it says you're a bit hesitant to cooperate, and that you are tardy every single day. <laughs> no, 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 no. I never expected you to be a star student or anything like that. To me, the fact that you're even trying is good enough. I'm quite pleased with you, honestly. Uh, hmm. You are quite far into your history lessons now. Good. Good. It's a favorite subject of mine. There are many things to be learned from past actions. Although sometimes it seems we repeat them, regardless because of our own carelessness. We cannot help it. When we are used to such things for so long. I do hope that you find it interesting, though. Today, however... I will be going over key information you will need for the ball. <laughs> oh, not that face again. I'm sure you detest the idea of going, but you will go. There is about a month left. 
and it is about time that you make a real public appearance. You must try and make amends with the nobles and with my family. You have been recuperating for many months now. I believe that you can manage to do a little bit of work. No. You can't be bothered to. <laughs> you are so turbulent. One minute, I feel like I'm finally getting somewhere, and... And the next, nothing. <laughs> Let's say I allow you to do absolutely everything you want. I won't look after you. What will you do? Attempt to raise another revolution in which no one in their right mind would support. Perhaps you'd truly be happy to forfeit your kingdom to me entirely. Or worse, the damned Elder Council that wanted you flayed in the first place. Settle down for once. I have given you many freedoms that you would not have been afforded had I not placed my life down for yours. I did not want you to die. How many times must I say that? You boast that you would rather rot down in the cells, wasting away your life like a good-for-nothing, when you have the power in the bloodline for change. I know you are no buffoon. You did not accept your stepmother's claim to war for nothing. Perhaps Leanna was part of it, yes. But it was just the final straw, was it not? But more so, you wish to protect your kingdom and the people from the perceived threat of us humans. If one of your armies had led an attack on a village in Pencos, no doubt I could simply stand still and watch idly. So what good would you be down in the cells? You say that because you are too cowardly to face the truth and accept what has happened. To accept where you are now. Besides, I know you're still fighting. Your violet eyes have yet to dull at all. You eavesdrop. You even steal my documents from time to time. Like during that first night. You've never been good at placing them back correctly. <laughs> I know you wish to know more. That you thirst for knowledge and truth as well. Oh, I knew, my prince, I knew all along. But I am not angry that you did. Instead, I am rather glad. I'd rather have someone who still has a fighting spirit, rather than someone who's completely given up on themselves. But even so, I need you to listen to me from time to time. I know it is unpleasant to be with me, but bear with it. If you behave well during this lesson, from now on I will allow you to review the documents regarding your country and mine together. You need to understand its current state, after all, if you are to rebuild and strengthen it. Hence, why you are also taking many history lessons. Every small moving part has contributed to the state of Morena today. Although, you must have noticed from the previous documents you have stolen from me <laughs> that there are parts yet to be completely understood, and how they play a role in the current status of the living lands. This lesson today, especially, will prove useful to you when you meet nobles and other important figures at Princess Eyre's engagement celebration. It will be key to gaining trust within Pankos. I will do all I can to support you, but I do not control your mind nor your actions. But I hope that you will heed my words and use my lessons to your benefit. But if you choose to act foolishly and ruin everyone's day, I will take the brunt of it. Clearly, I did not do enough, and they will see through that. You are silly. You would not be punished. No, nothing of the sort. You've yet to, anyhow, other than being confined to the palace grounds. I would just be disappointed, is all. 
But it is not like it would matter to you, right? I didn't... I didn't expect we'd even get so far as to have pleasant conversations every now and then. You've done well. Regardless, you know. I'm happy that we managed to get here. You know, I hate that our first real conversation was so awful. I didn't know how to go about it any other way. Had things been different, in another world maybe, it would have been nice. But that isn't the world we live in now, is it? No. It is... It is nothing, my prince. So, will you cooperate with me and continue this lesson? Please. Good. I'm glad. Let us move on, then. Now... This is a crucial event to attend. All of the Imperial family members will likely be there, as well as family members from each of the houses. The ball begins at 9 p.m. and can last until the morning hours at times. It is really an exhausting activity, isn't it? Thank goodness I am not the hostess. I could not stand there at the door greeting people for hours. There will be twelve dances in total. However, you will only be obligated to dance to one with me. If you intend on dancing with other ladies, you require an introduction from another acquaintance. But do not dance more than once with others. It would be a slight to me if so. <sighs> yes. In Pencos, if you dance twice or more, even, it means that you are interested in them. Well, we are engaged. It only makes sense not to. If you do not dance with me at all, though, perhaps that would be worse. I would like it if you could also come round with me and greet a few guests. It will be a good way to be introduced. Otherwise, I'm sure you would be sulking in a corner or making a ruckus somewhere else. Likely, my brothers and sisters will be walking around the ballrooms, and eventually you must speak to them as well. I have spoken to Livius and Theana beforehand, and, well, they are willing to speak with you briefly. So, use this chance wisely. Now, on to the houses. As you've learned in your history lessons, there are six major houses within Pencos. And those are? Correct. Elasia, Cytus, Ladle, Targethon, Iron, and O'Keegan. The Imperial household's blood stems from House Elasia. Currently, we are tied to Ladle, Cytus, and Targethon through marriages. The former Empress hailed from Cytus, and now Crown Prince Leo has inherited that blood. My own mother was from Targethon. As you know, I would say that Ladle is our current strongest ally. Princess Era is married to Grand Duke Anium. Hmm. Indeed, the Plectary Knight, a formidable force on the battlefield, was he not? No? Hmm. Meanwhile, Princess Menea is married to Lord Rosirius Aranome. He is someone who helped me in my endeavor to take down my mother. He is a renowned strategist. Hmm. Ladle and Cytus will be the easiest to converse with. From House Cytus, if you can, you will speak to Duke Greece. He was the father of the former Empress. His position, however, will be passed on to General Dante Hull, but getting a good relationship going with Duke Greece will be beneficial. Ah, well... You are practically already family with Anium and Rasias of House Ladle, but speaking to Lady Mara will do you good. She is a brilliant woman, and can help sort out any issues you have. Although, I would say that forming friendships with House Iron and O'Keegan will be even more important. Though their power has waned over the past few decades, 
They have been historically strong in rich houses. My grandmother, Empress Mother Regina, and Queen Mother Aisha were from those houses. I would suggest you speak to Duchess Asteria of House Iron and her son, Lord Adel. <laughs> they are people of innovation and brilliance. For O'Keegan, Duke Jasper is someone good to talk to. He's a kind man and an idealist. Seeing a changed you will revive his spirits. He would be more than willing to lend money to rebuild for the betterment of the living. Uh, his daughter, Lady Cornelia, is married to Lord Adel. Easy connections, indeed. Though, on to the topic of my own family. Our relationship is strained, to say the least. Targeton is known for being hostile. We are one of the families that supported the rule of Manium, the tyrant in the old days. We were given mercy by Empress Era. There seemed to be hope with the first Duchess, Carmilla Targeton. But it all fell apart centuries later. Now we are known as rather cruel people. It is not untrue. It is a vicious cycle. We were raised in unthinkable ways. Luckily, my brother escaped from that. And so I would say that Targethon will be the most difficult to form a relationship with. I am at odds with the next duke, Lord Adder. He is impulsive, and at times rather unsightly. Perhaps you could get along with him, but I'd rather you not be influenced again by bad people. His sister, Countess Ophia, will also be in attendance. I would like you to talk to her, if you can. She does not have much sway within the household, but... The connection is there, and she is a good friend. Are you even writing this down? <sighs> Whatever. It is fine. You will be with me anyway, for the most part, so I doubt you would need to remember. But just in case, if I am away greeting someone else or attending to some business, make sure to make your way around and speak to people. Not everyone is so hostile, and some more than others. Many months have passed, and people are healing, more forgiving. That does remind me, another group you might want to think about is the Church of Morena. If you see St. Streya there, you might want to thank her. She has been a great help to your wounded as well as ours. Hmm? Are you tired yet? Well, there's only a little more, and then we can break until your next lesson. You will be required to learn a few dances in preparation for the ball itself. The waltz, quadrille, or polka. There are a good number of variations for each, and it would be good to know the basics of each one. I know your dance culture is much different to our own. Indeed, I have observed it before. Although many of your festivals have been cancelled, a few towns continue to hold them. It is a morale boost, and a way to get the community together, is it not? As I toured through your kingdom, I became rather enamored with it. Oh. Well, well of course you will see them someday. You will return home. To experience it, for sure soon. I... I know that promises might seem like nothing to you, especially when they're coming from your captor, of all things. But I do promise that after all of this, when things are finally set in place, you will come home again. It just 
isn't quite that time yet. I... I am trying my best. I hope you understand that. Even if it makes you frustrated and upset. I see that your heart is still filled with animosity for me. And I could not blame you. It is not easy. I could never expect it to be. I do not think that we... We could ever be friends, either. You can only see me as horrid, after all, since that is all you know. It makes sense. I still have lingering sentiments that you are good deep down, and that you can be better, that your actions do not completely define you. I know my words mean nothing to you. But for Princess Era's engagement celebration, please try. For yourself. Show them that you are a sociable person, that you are more than your mistakes if you wish to accept them. I... I think that this lesson is over now, though. You did a very good job. Huh? No, I... I'll give you another day of break from me at dinner. I'll have my meal in my study. I still have quite a bit of work to do. Rest and recuperate. Remember those names in which houses will be key to your political revival. Ah, and your dance lessons will begin shortly. <laughs> I think you will be needing them, my pet. You seem quite clumsy, don't you know? <laughs> well, I suppose we'll see then. You'll have to impress me. I do hope your hatred of me does not interfere with your ability to dance. Well then, I'll see you some time later. Hmm? Yes, Erica? Ah, right. He's ready, then. Good. Lemon. There you are, my pet. You look just splendid. Mmm, very cute indeed. I could just eat you up. <laughs> Come in and sit for a while. Erica, you may leave. Hmm. I have a few things to discuss with you before we head to the ballroom. Hmm. You seem to be anxious by the look of things. I wouldn't have thought you'd even care. Well, you needn't be there for too long. A few hours will do. Just enough to dance and converse with others. Hmm. The ball might last till the morning hours, but many people tend to rest around 2 or 3 a.m. after supper is served. Hmm. So, less people will be around, and you are welcome to sleep. Ah, now, on to what I wanted to speak about. May you come closer? I would like to take a better look at you. Hmm. Mm. Your clothes match mine very well. You are the image of royalty. Good. Very good. But there is something ill-fitting, it seems. Hold still and close your eyes for a moment. <laughs> I hope it doesn't tickle you too much. It will only be a few moments. Ah, there. And now, you look perfect. Oh? <laughs> well, I removed that collar of yours. There is no longer a need to have it. 
Why do you look at me like that? <laughs> I suppose you would be surprised. Did you think I would never take it off? <laughs> it wouldn't have been forever, my prince. It was simply a precaution. I needed to make sure that you couldn't hurt anyone. You know it well, how deep your anger ran. I likely made it worse in some ways, especially within those first few weeks. But, as I have spent more time with you, I feel... I feel as if we have come to at least tolerate one another. We bicker and quarrel still, yes. Perhaps it is silly to put even an ounce of trust in this relationship, but I am. Because I feel we will get nowhere if not. Indeed, you could harm me now, or run away and never come back. But I have a sliver of hope you would not. You know what I can offer you, what I can do to help. You are the crown prince of Claris, once a powerful man who held a kingdom in the palm of his hand. <laughs> I know I said that once, perhaps twice even, but there is more to you than a simple, idiotic, entitled brat. You are cunning in some ways I did not expect. I, too, was blinded by anger. But your future was ruined by your mother and my own. Both of us were manipulated, seeking some way to satisfy what we were lacking. Our countries were hurt by them. And we were, too. I just wish to fix this mess. I... Perhaps we can never be friends or lovers. But I will support you if nothing else. I am your ally. And I hope that you could be mine. More than anything... I want to stabilize our countries and to bring peace back again. Tonight, you can start real progress. Getting your foot in the door, gaining support from our nobles, creating long and trusting relationships for the betterment of your kingdom. But that is up to you. Whether you trust me and the people of my empire to help yours. You still hold much pain, anger, and resentment. But if you want to perhaps share my vision for a better future, then take my hand. I have done all I can to try and persuade you. I... I understand. It is fine. You may leave if you truly wish it. I... Are you truly willing to try? I am glad. Good. It is a bit of... relief. A little bit more progress between you and me. You are clearly still hesitant. I know. In fact, I'm sure you will still fight with me and I won't hesitate to fight back. I won't hold back. But there must be a mutual trust between the two of us. Perhaps more time will help to mend this. But we'll talk more on it later. If you still wish to remain here, that is. However, we must hurry to the celebration. I do not like to be late. <sighs> Thankfully, the ballroom was not too far away. <laughs> I am well aware that it would not matter what time I arrive, but it makes me rather nervous. 
Well, I've never enjoyed being late, and if I show up halfway through and have my name announced, all eyes would be drawn toward me, and I'd really rather not. So, what do you think of the arrangements? You haven't been to many of our balls, have you? Hmm, indeed. There are many roses about. It is my sister's signature flower. It is well picked for her engagement celebration. Well, according to rumors, while the Plectary Knight guarded Princess Era, he would bring her a bouquet of fresh roses every day to give her some comfort while she was hidden away in her room from ailments. It is sweet, is it not? It is also true. I've asked her about it once. Ah, oh, but I've never been to a Clarn Ball. How does it differ? Oh, interesting. I suppose you must have more entertainment about them. We tend to have a few musicians, perhaps a singer, but that all depends on the host. Hmm. Do your balls tend to last for ungodly hours? <laughs> well, I suppose there's that in common. Huh? Oh, my brothers and sisters are likely still getting ready. Lord knows when Era will arrive. She's always late. She likes to make a statement. Hmm. Leo's wife is always in the tower and is busy with work. But I do hope to see her tonight. She's always a good chat. A bit particular, but fun. Menea might come with Resias and their two children, but likely she'll turn in for the night very quickly. Ah, uh, and... Well, Livius and Vienna. They should be here, but I'm not sure. If she is well enough, she will be. If not... Livius will quickly make an appearance and then leave to care for her. But we shall see, my prince. Till then, you need not worry. Simply stick by my side, and we will survive tonight's festivities. Well, if you'd like to try, anyhow. Ah, and if you're ever in need of any food, there is a room to the other side filled with treats. If you remember from your lessons, what should you not do? Good. No food in the ballroom. <laughs> ah, and later in the night, if you do wish to dance with others, remember, not more than once. Got it? Good. Well, I suppose that's settled then. We'll make the rounds and see who we can talk to. But first, my favorite activity. Let us be wallflowers and observe. Hmm. Let's see. Over there. <laughs> Do you see that gentleman with the red hair? Hmm. That is Duke Parias of Targathon. My uncle. We will avoid him if we can. But likely he will want to speak with me on matters of... My mother. Hmm. Next to him is Lord Adder, my foolish cousin. And, unfortunately, the next leader of House Targethon. It brings me no joy to see a netwit rule over such an important position. If anything, it should have been Ophia. No, I suppose he has mellowed out some since he got married last year. No, Truthfully, his wife is rather atrocious as well. Thankfully, she's not here, as to avoid Menea. But that is a lengthy story. Perhaps another time. Now, let's see. Hmm, who else? Ah, that woman over there? That is Lady Taylor Idea of O'Keegan. She is a talented mage under Headmistress Sinna. She is quite well-versed in the history of Claris, actually. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Archmage Vesper and Headmistress Sinna won't be here. 
But they have sent their regards. It seems they have a prior engagement that takes precedent. Hmm. Oh, someone of note we must speak to. Come along. Good evening, Duke Grease. May the mountains hold strong and the people stay cunning. I do hope you are well, Grandfather. Hmm. Yes, that is good to hear. We are well as well. <laughs> and are most happy with the engagement of Princess Era. Thank you for your support of their marriage in the absence of our father. Ah, huh. let me introduce you. This is my fiancé, Crown Prince Adept Morvoto of Claris. No doubt you've heard of our engagement. Indeed, he is much more refined than those rumors make him out to be. <laughs> I found it surprising myself. Ah, but how is Cytus faring? Your water facilities are due for renovation, I think. I'll contact Etchi and see what we can do. Ah, yes. If you would allow it, I would love to come and discuss a few things with you and my fiancé. Claris is in dire need of pure water. And, as you know, sickness and death will only persist if it cannot be cleaned properly. No. It has not been enough, and so I hope with the kindness in your heart, will you assist, Adept? I see, then. We shall discuss it more. I will send you a letter. I do hope you enjoy the rest of the ball. I'll write to you again, Grandfather. <sighs> so, how was that? Not too bad, right? Thankfully, he's a kind old man who loves us all. I have quite a bit of sway with him. <laughs> you are correct, my prince. He is not my grandfather by blood. But when we were little, he loved us all regardless. Although our relations changed when my mother turned into the evil being she was, he still held hope. And when I discovered my mother's hidden ledgers, and was able to uncover the truth of Manea's birth, Duke Grease was eternally grateful. He's a good old man. He's quite lonely. His wife died soon after his daughter did. Then Empress Erish died, and he only had his two grandchildren. Uh, but I hope that wasn't too exhausting. Do you want to run away yet? <laughs> so there's a chance, then. Well, I do hope we can greet a few more people before you start causing a mess. You're saying you won't? <laughs> well, I... I will perhaps have some confidence in you, then. You've done well tonight so far. <laughs> Although I, I must say you are still a bit awkward. <laughs> well, I suppose it is difficult to speak in a refined manner when all we do is spell insults at one another, isn't it? Which, I should remind you, please do be kind to Prince Ides. He often complains about your behavior, you know? Uh, the stars of the evening are here. Hmm. They are a beautiful couple, are they not? I am happy for her. You should have seen her during the war. He was called in to take care of her during the first year of war, when negotiations were still happening. No doubt you remember. Before the battle started. And when he left her, she was in a state. We were yet to be on good terms, but I observed her from time to time. She prayed every day for his return and she could barely eat for a month, till she realized she was with his child. <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, come along. We shall greet them. Do not be too nervous. They are intimidating for sure. But you will be able to navigate it. Sister. Brother. Hera, my dear, you look beautiful this evening. I thought you were never going to show up. 
but I suppose the time you took to get ready proved well. Brother, how do you fare? Good, good. <sighs> Let me introduce you formally. I suppose you have met before, haven't you? Although perhaps now under much better circumstances. This is my fiance, Crown Prince Adept Morvoto. <sighs> perhaps in a better, more private environment, we could have dinner together. It has been too long. Ah, that reminds me. Ophia wished to speak to you about bringing in a few more troops. I am not fully informed on what she wants to speak about, but she will send a letter soon. Oh, but wait, where's little Arlan? <laughs> there you are. Come here. Oh, you're getting bigger by the day, aren't you? N no, no, sweetie. <laughs> it's fine. I have gloves on tonight. It won't hurt. Let me give you a nice big hug. <laughs> and heavier, it seems. Uh, uh, say hello, Arlan. This is Adept. You might be seeing him around a little more often. Mm, you're right. Indeed, he is from Clarist. Oh, Era, have you seen Livia and Theanna around? I was hoping to speak to my brother. Oh, uh, I see. Well, I shall visit you another time. All right, Arlan? Take care of your mother and father. Good. Hmm. Well then, if you would excuse us, we will go greet them. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Come along, then. Oh, um, are you okay? Uh, I know this will be difficult, but it will be a short greeting. And you need to. You know you do. I am right here. It will be over in no time. Livius, Theanna, how are you faring? Good. I am glad it has subsided. <laughs> yes, this is, as you both know, indeed, adept. We both simply wish to... <sighs> wish you a good evening. Diana and you were both friends once, were you not? <laughs> you are quite kind, princess. My prince? Go ahead. I, um, I know it is not much, but I hope that you feel the sincerity of his apology, and I, too, apologize on his behalf. Livius. <laughs> Stand down. We are in public. Do not ruin this. If Princess Theena is willing to forgive him, then let it be so. I know what he has done. It is clear as day. But it is rather apparent that he stands here not in an attempt to mock or insult you. He is trying. As silly as it might seem. Do not make a ruckus, Livius. Do you hear me? Adept? My prince! Come back! <sighs> Look at what you've done. He's worked so hard to try and assimilate himself here, and to find forgiveness for his wrongdoings. <laughs> I must go find him. I trust that you will enjoy the rest of your evening. Where could he have gone? Perhaps it was too soon. I've made a mistake again. I was careless. I knew not everyone would be inviting him into society with open arms. I am a fool. Where could he be? Adept? 
I... Perhaps he has really run away now. I could not blame him. Running into someone who might just be his mortal enemy in such a position. Adept. Adept. My prince. Huh? That sound. Is that coming from the garden? Oh, oh dear. I... Are you all right? What is the matter? I... I did not imagine you would run all the way here of all places. <laughs> May I sit beside you? I... I am sorry. That was far too much for you, was it not? I apologize on behalf of my brother as well. Life here in another country after such a war was never going to be easy. I... I see. So that is why you ran away. Indeed. She was happy. She is. Diana always has been living here. Facing the reality of it all, it must have shocked you even further. I suppose somewhere in your heart you still doubt her happiness here. But now you see that it's true. And I had told you that from the beginning. It is difficult to swallow the truth, and I know that very well. May I tell you about my mother? Perhaps you can relate in some ways. Hmm. Mother had always been a kind woman. And soft-spoken. She chose to raise us in a way that was gentle. But when Empress Arish had died, it was like she snapped. She was a completely different person, like a parasite had taken over her body. I loved her with all my heart, even when she beat me. I thought it was her way of showing me her love, even after I'd been scarred, I was happy. It was like a mark of her motherly love for me, eternal in my body. I latched onto her because I had nothing else. I was isolated from my siblings, and my father slowly deteriorated in mind and body, and so I... I held on to her. Until I couldn't take it anymore. But it wasn't even... The blood that she caused me to bleed that made me realize it. It was when she tried to harm my maids again, in front of my eyes. I had lost one once, and I could not let it happen again. I didn't want to lose Annalise or Erica. Slowly, everything she did, all her actions became disgusting to me. Perhaps I should have realized it sooner, but it was far too late. But I tried. I tried my best to be better. But even so, her lessons are still ingrained in me, no matter how much I try to get rid of them. Perhaps for you, Diana was a saving grace, a light in the dark. So I understand why you turned out this way. I feel that many of our actions cannot be forgiven, but we can try our best to atone for what we have done and to work towards something better. I feel an incomprehensible amount of guilt for all that my mother has done, for what I've done. But for you... I only know a little of what your life was like growing up. If you'd like to, would you like to share? You don't need to, of course. I... Oh. 
All right, then. I see. Yes. I remember that. She was alive back then, wasn't she? So, then after that is when it all changed for you. What... What did Queen Miro do to you? Oh. I suppose evil women employed the same sort of tricks. <sighs> what our mothers did was diabolical. Murdering all those people simply to point the finger at Penkos to trick you. Over and over and over again. Until you believed it was the truth. <sighs> Again, I am sorry. I did not expect it to affect you so strongly. I'll make sure to properly reprimand my brother. He has always been rather troublesome. Perhaps a bit like yourself. I have no doubt his animosity will remain for the rest of time. <laughs> he is a stressed and rude fellow. No doubt he chose to take advantage of his powers again. You've been anxious the entire night, and he clearly saw that as an opportunity to hurt you. <sighs> Little siblings are so annoying. <laughs> well, that's true. But I'm the older twin. Do you? That is true. You do love Princess Anissa, don't you? As little children, they are sweet. A little troublesome, but lovely. They were quite friendly with Arlan back there. <laughs> I did not take you as a family man. Oh. <laughs> I want a few children of my own, too. A big, happy family. No, I don't seem like that type of woman either, do I? I suppose that you are rather different to how I thought you were. Your actions as a young man have clouded my judgment, obviously. But when I met you as a child, I just thought you were brilliant. Well... Shall I tell you about when I first saw you? Hmm. You were maybe nine or so. I stood behind my mother, nervous, awaiting your arrival to the palace. It was said that the delegation would be of great importance, so I was rather interested. <laughs> but at the same time, a prince from another kingdom? I had never met any foreigners before, so... I was a bit shy. Your carriage arrived, and you jumped out the door in a flash, beaming smile and messy hair. You're practically bouncing around. Your mother, I assume, was there as well, attempting to restrain you. <laughs> it is a silly little memory. But I remember over the course of the visit although not being able to have a conversation. And you were always so outspoken. You absolutely embodied confidence, something I was not. Hmm. When you tried to speak to me, I could barely open my mouth to say a word. <laughs> hmm. I do remember you being very friendly with Livia, so, back then. And Leo, too. But I wanted to be like you. <sighs> to be as confident and bright. It's silly, I know. It has been a very, very long time since then, but the memory of you bursting out that carriage has always stuck with me. Hmm. 
Are you feeling any better, by the way? Uh, I see. That is good. If I can, and... I know it's not as if we are at that level yet, but... I... May I embrace you? It is... Perhaps too much, but I feel like you need it. Hmm. All right, then. I'm sorry again, but I'm here for you. Even if I am a rude and villainous woman. It is rather late, isn't it? <laughs> I suppose we should just turn in for the night, hmm? Oh. <laughs> yes, you can hear the music even from here. Indeed, that'll probably go on for a few more hours. Huh? Uh, oh, right. I suppose you are correct. I nearly forgot. We didn't even get to dance. You did owe me one, but it is not important. Um, well, we could dance here. I suppose we need not be in the view of people. Come here, then. Mm. I hope you can remember your dance lessons. And here, and there. And mine here and here. <laughs> I hope you're not too nervous. Now. One, two, three, four, five, six. There, you got it. <laughs> you're not too awful. I suppose those lessons paid off somewhat. It's not too bad dancing like this. Hmm. It does go a little fast, does it not? Hmm. This type of waltz goes a bit quick. <laughs> I think you could easily show up my brother at the very least. He has two left feet. Hmm. Did you know that during dances, it is one of the best times to have a conversation? Well, for those who are courting, anyhow. <laughs> I do not think I'd personally want to discuss business while twirling about. Oh. I suppose the song was already half done then. Well, despite not being a full dance, I enjoyed that, my prince. <laughs> well, there are many songs to go, but I'm sure you're exhausted, aren't you? You want to dance again? Hmm. I would love to, if you'd gladly take my hand. <laughs> <laughs> 